Okay, this is this is mostly how vintage snowmobiles are moved. Picking them up. <laughs> See if we can't get it going long enough to get it to the garage. I hope so. This thing, my back won't take too much more of this. I can kind of have my leisure pull that carburetor off of there. That's, that's definitely what's going on. It's just not pulling the gas like it's supposed to. I've been out of here quite a few hours, so I think I'm going to wait and do this tomorrow. So we'll continue the video tomorrow. It's a little bit cool out here to be standing and not really doing manual stuff. It's a little bit too chilly for that. Okay, we're gonna put the tools there. We're gonna get the snowmobile back covered again. Okay. Too deep in the Okay, today we are going to be working on this Tilson HR76A carburetor for my 1970 Skeeto Olympic, 1970, 1970, 399cc. First thing, get some new to put into it. We have a new gas filter here. I'm probably gonna have to get new gas line too because it's uh the gas line on it that I've got with it is pretty old so probably gonna need a new gas line. I know I'm gonna be getting a new one of these gaskets also well first off welcome to northern ants my name is mark and I'm by no means a, a expert at this I should be I've been doing it for a lot of years but it's just something that I I try to pick it up but I just it's always kind of I always forget in between getting to do it or needing to do it, not getting to do it. I would prefer not. Let's move this camera back a little bit just to keep it vibrating. In the... Okay. First thing we want to do is we want to get all these. Screws loosened. I probably could have got a better screwdriver. I thought this was one of my better screwdrivers, but it's not feeling like it. I gotta remember my. I keep looking up at the screen, and my camera's down here. Outside, it's 
second ago and it's 11 degrees outside and the problem is this now that I'm inside sweat it's a lot hotter inside than it did out compared now that I, my body was kind of adapted to it Turkeys are outside right now. I'm going to have to get a better screwdriver. Case here has got a bunch of spare stuff in it, and I've got new gaskets. It's one thing you get a lot of over the years. When you have vintage sleds, it's a uh, on it and then ride it and then work on it and then ride it every other week <laughs> and all the bucks out there now too the the doe or the turkeys and the, and then the buck just showed up too yeah we got some gas leaking out the so much of things are plugged. This was a going to be my primary reason why I was having so much problems been running. some water too. Probably a majority of it is water. I like to do is flip the components as you take them off, flip them over so that when you put them back together you can just take and flip it right back to the so it's sitting correctly. Okay. My new gaskets, I need to get the correct ones. I've got, this is the, the new O-ring that this, to replace that. And it, I don't think I have a screen. I've got, these are for the exhaust. Oh no, this, oh no, that's different. This, this is for car, the carburetor, Never mind. Uh, let's see what we need. Oh, I don't like this. It's a plastic. These are pretty much useless, so we're going to have to use the same one. These plastic. That's a shame. Oh well. Um, at least this one's probably not going to be in too bad a shape. Just have to be careful with it. Okay. 
because this material is a little bit different kind of material here. Set it on there, and then we need the next one is we need this will be the next. And when you're putting it, you'll be able to see how it goes on there like that. But this one goes on first, and then this. It'll all line up. So that's the replacement for this one. Yeah, see the gasket starting to crumble. So what you want to do is get that, you want to get all the excess off of there, because you don't want this. Most of the time what I'll do is I'll just use the screwdriver. You can use the end of the screwdriver or you can use a, a razor or your fingernail. Don't want to try not to mar the metal because then it makes places where you get gas leaks past the gaskets. More air leaks. And then you don't get the correct suction. And you can take. I don't have much of this left, it's like a... I'll try to clean it up as best you can. Yeah, there's a lot of buildup right along in here. Looks like could be reasons. Okay, and then you take you can even take and put it back on like this because this one's got the little nubs which those line up and it makes it easier to get the get it back together and then we've got this one this is the next uh, gasket that we would need. And that. Just like that. Putting fingerprints on it, that's not good. Greasy. This one can be used again at some point. That's how I get a lot of my extras. 
things like that will be, be okay for future jobs if I need to. And then next we've got it's going to be this gasket here to set it on there, and then just flip it over. Line it up. And this is the one that kind of gets jammed together. What you want to do is kind of pry it up. Yeah, see, we're dripping bit gas in there. Yeah, there's a lot of gas built up in there. There's a possibility that this needle is not being picked up properly and there's some corrosion in there too so we might have had some water get in there at some point so now we want to get this gasket off of it. this one comes off it's always good when it doesn't you know no nope, that's gonna do it it's I think it's peeling off against the metal right at the same spot as the other one did yeah it came off not too bad but still it pretty damaged so. one here let's do the same way we did it before we're gonna have to flip it and get them on there exactly through those then we could flip that now we got to pull this part apart this one this is the main net oh shoot things like this is when my shaking is like gets really annoying because this delicate work it's like so I shake really bad and it just makes it even harder to deal with Yeah, I think even my diaphragm one is going to not going to come out of this very well. Oh, not too terrible. You can see it in the close-up shot. Well, never mind. It's I might be able to wet it and get that to come apart. But I'm glad I have an extra one. <laughs> it's always good to have a spare. Okay, now. So then, put this down. And we 
want this to be facing up. So, kind of goes together like so. And then we've got this gasket. <laughs> that shaking such a okay well we got these all lined up the way they're supposed to be so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna we got this is where it's supposed to be we're gonna set that off to the side for right now primary thing is to make sure you keep them in order so when you put things back together it it's correct <laughs> Okay, we got some extra gaskets here. Put those back. Ah, uh, let's see what else we got here. to take out this. I'm gonna go, hold on one second, I'll be, I've got it right here, actually, as long as I can not bump the camera. This little screwdriver kit should come in handy. Definitely not any good anymore. That one should work. Weird. My computer went into sleep mode and that doesn't do that. At least it hasn't. This will be trickier because I'm going to be working on it with my left hand. Be a little rod. Nuts. 
see one in here. So we'll just use the one that we've got. So, trade that out. A new one. And this one's got a little One's got a little rubber tip, and one's got the little metal tip. Uh, I think I'm just going to clean up the rubber tipped one. I think I like the rubber tip better. It seems to make a better seal than the metal tipped one. I'm just I'll put that back in the spares, which could come in handy someday. Go back, see how far it turns. So that's the three quarters. I think that's the low, yeah, the lowest three quarters of a turn. Looks like. Another one that I kind of like to use the originals that is with it if I can get them cleaned up nicely. same port in there too. We're just going to clean it up nice. over here and we're gonna spray some of this down in the port. Clean that up too. 
Okay, where do we put the needle valve back in? We want to go all the way in. We took it all the way back in there. Until it's tight. And we're just going to leave it alone for right now. So we're going to get the high side. The high pressure or high. It's an H. I'm not sure exactly. High or high flow maybe. This is probably one of my best running sleds. It's a, a pretty much a Frankenstein sled because it's bits and pieces from a whole bunch of different sleds. I don't think there's anything on it that actually came on it originally. <laughs> Wipe down clean. And we're going to do the same thing. Right through spring. We're going to hold the paper towel over this. And here too again. Find out where you have cuts on your hands. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, I've got one right, right there. <laughs> Figure them out quickly with the carb cleaner going into the wound. Okay, now put the high H in there, back in there. Tighten it up. And a big part of this is cross the fingers. <laughs> and then let's put the inner working stuff back together. We do have an extra one of these, but I'm not going to mess with that today either. We're just going to leave the one that's in there. In there. Now, what I do is take this, it's got a little knit like that holds it. It's got a tiny spring. It goes down in this little there and this little rod that goes inside here. Now what you want to do is try to get <laughs> which is all complicated by my shaking and bad back <laughs> sitting like this this is why this is the only reason why I would get a, a new slide I want a, well I would like a new slide because I would like to be able to do more trail riding and stuff but I love the old sleds, it's just my body doesn't love them all that much. The older I get. And then there's a little nub that the end of the spring fits on. And you put it down in there, in there like that. And then it goes you can see that with the camera here. Now there's the screw. There's a little nut right there. That's where the spring goes. And what I want to do is now tighten this screw down and hold it. Okay. 
Well, it's not too bad already. Get that nice and tight down. And then there's, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, how it's got just a little, how it goes. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. I don't know if it's better from this angle. You see how it's lifting that needle valve. It's actually really good. Usually you have to really mess around with this to get it to line up nicely. It's kind of actually perfect. That's unusual. I keep looking at the, I'm looking up there, but my camera's down here. Uh, sorry about that. But it, uh, it's got to be just a little above, not much though, just almost flush. Because then as the gas, it, as you rub the pressure pulls on it, it pulls this little, which I'll get put on there in a second here. This little, this little thing here is what gets sucked and takes and pushes on that valve that pulls in the gas. Okay, let's, what now what we're going to do, get this out of the way, I'm going to move this over just a little bit. We're going to, oh, well that's how it's supposed to go. Oh, okay, well that makes sense. This would you want to get these little holes, these ports lined up? Which now I think we can just flip it and get this because the other ones are all lined up already. There we go. Hopefully that is not shutting off my record, because for some reason my computer keeps going into sleep mode and I don't want it to be shutting off my recording. Okay, now we got that. Now what we want to do, we get all these screws back, set them all back in there. Appreciate you sticking, sticking through the whole video. I'll add out some of the parts and stuff because we'll play around with everything in the editing process. And we always do. Always do. This will be nice because then I can get back to doing riding videos. I do have a. problem with that other sled of my mom's the 69 I've been working on it I was I didn't film as I was working on it and uh, got it all back together which you saw the if you saw the short that I did of it I got spark I got it all back together since I did that short video it ran once I got it back together, it fired right up, and it ran for quite a while. And then it shut off, and the next morning, when I went out to start it again, it wouldn't start. So, I pulled the plug out, put the, and hooked it up to the, the spark plug cable, pulled it over, and it had big time spark, a really nice spark. So I tried to put gas in the carburetor and pull it over and pull it over and nothing it would not will not catch. No firing. It's sparking like crazy. It worked. But I think what happened is it got so far out of timing. Yeah, it's filling up, it's getting gas, but it's just not 
getting the you know the cylinder heads not up to the top when it sparks so it's not igniting the fuel okay while you're doing this what you want to do is kind of like when you're putting a tire you want to kind of cross tread Go to this one, and then go to this one. Because if you would go around this way, you're going to have this side, it's going to kind of be up. So you want to go back and forth on the you get to a certain point then you can kind of just go right around it but I want to make sure that these gaskets are nicely tightened together so that we don't get any air loss we need it to be the suction to be working to pull the fuel that's how it pulls the fuel up out of the tank. So those gaskets in there working together, sucking the gas. And now we got this little screen, which is kind of a an extra keeping large debris out. And we got this gasket here. It goes in there to keep. Okay. Did I get it upside down or something? I don't think so. Okay, there we go. Yeah, good enough. And then we got our new, which has a rubber gasket in it too. So two rubber gaskets connect together, then that makes a nice tight seal. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to, you yeah, see it, Here. okay, now we got our, got these. Okay, so now what do you want to do? See where it's that way, you want to go one, two, three. So that's three quarters of a turn. And then this one, we want to go one, two, three, four, five. That's one and a quarter, so one and a quarter turns. So now that should give us the correct uh, amount of fuel being released. One is for when you're idling and the other one's for when you're like you're when you're full throttle, when you're opening up the throttle and going all the way up to 35 miles an hour. <laughs> Unlike 150 like sleds these days. Okay, well, I think that looks pretty good. Now, big thing is that I got I got little bits of, as you can see here, little bits of gas line on there that I need to get off. I can just cut it off, but. The gas line that I've got on the snowmobile right now is kind of hard, so I might try putting it, it depends if I have enough gas line left on the sled, if it's going to reach to all these ports and stuff, and we'll see that. But, okay, well, thank you so much for watching this episode of working on a Tiltson carburetor for my 
399 Olympic. That's a Rotec engine. Thank you so much. Hit that like button. Don't forget to hit the write a comment down below what you think. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate it. You have a great rest of your day. And I will talk to you in the comments. thank you so much for stopping by and watching one of my videos. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you know exactly when the next video comes out. I do offer a wide range of different kinds of videos, so check out the playlist and you might find something else that you like other than this kind of video you watched today. Thank you so much. Comment down below what you thought or just say hi. Have a great rest of your day.